everybody, this is the Shy Genealogist. Today I want to show you some things that you can do with the blank tax database that I have added to the downloads folder on my blog. I have assembled this over several years of collecting tax information for various ancestors, trying to track where they moved to through the years and to use clues of different family members to help me to know where to look for records for different ancestors. And the first thing that I want you to notice here is that up at the top of the screen, this top line is frozen in place so that no matter how far down you go in your database, that line's always going to be there so that you can remember which columns go with which information. If that is something that you would like to turn off, you can do that by highlighting the top row and then coming up to the View tab. And right here is a button to freeze the panes. If you click that, you want to unfreeze the panes, and now when you scroll, that line disappears. If that happens for some reason and you want to turn it back on, you go through the same process. Highlight the top row, go to the View tab, click on Freeze the Panes, and tell it that you want to freeze the top row. Now, no matter how far down you get in your list, all the categories will be there for you to see. The second thing that I would like for you to see is that you need to be very careful about the order of these columns. They did not always remain the same over the years, and the ones that I especially want to point out to you are the two columns for the ages of the white males. Some years they asked for white males above 21 first, and other years they asked about white males above 16 and under 21 first. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going through several names and entering your information. I tried to include all the different categories that I would find over the years. The later the dates in the, in the tax records, the more information they asked for. So if you're looking in the early 1800s or the late 1700s, a lot of these columns don't even appear. And if that is the case, I do recommend that you gray some cells out so that you would know you didn't skip those, you would know that those weren't actually asked. To gray out your cells, you would highlight the cells that you want to add a gray color to. Come to the Home tab, and here we have a bucket with color in it. Drop down and select your color. Now the reason I use that instead of these over here is because these all have a formatting for the text, and it might change the color of your text in a way that you weren't interested in. So I usually use the bucket to shade in some columns if I'm indicating that a column was not included in that specific year. Let's just come across these real quick. I always include the date, obviously. You'll want to know what date that you were looking at. I always include the page number that I'm looking at because that will help me to see if two ancestors were listed together or not. Some years the tax records were organized by military district, and if that is the case, I try to put in the captain's name. Again, if a group of people were in the same military district, that may mean that they gathered together on a regular period of time to report for militia duty, and, some, and that's just a nice thing to know. The person's name, that's pretty obvious. I always try to include the spelling exactly the way that it is in the tax record because sometimes that gives me a clue for a different spelling that I might want to look for in other records. When they asked about the amounts of land, they usually, not always, but they often had the tax form set up to show how many acres of first-rate land, second-rate land, and third-rate land. Again, be careful. If your county did not have any first-rate land, they might leave that column off. I always include what county I'm looking at because for a certain period of time, ancestors were allowed to pay their taxes in the county that they were living in no matter where the property was that they owned. So you might have an ancestor who owned several tracts of land but they weren't in the same county. That can also give me a clue of places that I need to look for records for. The water course usually included uh, the name of a river or a creek that was nearby that can help you locate that land on a map in whose name entered, surveyed, patented. 
Uh, this can help me find the original records of who owned the land and follow that chain of ownership along. Here are our columns for white males above 21. It's the column that I put first and then whites above 16 and under 21. There were a couple of years where uh, ancestors were actually required to name white males who were above 21, so there might be some times that you're typing a name in here. And then we have uh, blacks above 16 and total blacks. There were a few years in my experience where they also asked for blacks under 16, but that didn't happen very often, so I've just decided to add that in parentheses if I find that I need to. And then they asked for horses and total valuation and value per acre. Again, these columns are in a different order all through the years, and I just uh, try to take the most common order and keep them that way at the top. It may not be the way that it appears on the tax record. Sometimes they put the value per acre directly after the number of acres here, so that's something to watch out for. Now I'm going to show you an example of a, a tax database that I have been working on for several years and this is for my Smith line. This is an example of, of why you might want to use the gray to uh, mark out the cells that aren't being asked. In this certain year, 1795, there were actually two different tax lists. One for all of the land, and they did not ask any of these questions about horses and cattle and number of people. And then they had a second list that didn't ask about the land, and they asked all the questions about the horses and the number of males and the number of cattle and things like that. So this is another reason uh, why you might want to use the graying out of cells. You'll also notice that I've taken this column for district and I've used that to indicate this is Gabriel Slaughter's first tax list that appeared, but he had a second list that asked the other question. So there was a real estate list and then there was a property list. So I just indicated that there was Gabriel Slaughter and Gabriel Slaughter B so that I would know that I would probably want to look for a person's name in both lists. That's one way to use this district column. You might also run into counties where they have a tax list for the upper district and the lower district. That might be something that you want to indicate in this district column as well. Because what I found is when they have two separate lists like that, the page numbering often started over. So this is page 13 of Gabriel Slaughter's first list, but these are page 11 of Gabriel Slaughter's second list. That can be a clue to help me know if I need to go back and look for someone, what pages I should be looking at, which district I should be looking at. Another thing that I've included on this database is the ability to filter. And filtering allows us to look for specific items. So if I click, I'm going to click on county because the list isn't quite as long. If I click this down arrow for county, I can see all the different counties that are included in this list. If I decide I don't want to see everybody, I just want to see the land that was in Clark County or Clark and Fayette County. You don't have to just click one, you can click several tell it OK, and now I'm just seeing land that was in Clark and Fayette County. To bring them all back, I would click that down arrow and hit the Select All button and see them all again. Now the filtering is great if you're looking for a specific person's name. If I just wanted to see all my John Smiths, I can look in this list and I'll see, oh, I've got several different ways that he was indicated through the years. Maybe I just want to see the ones that had the military designation with them. Or maybe I just want to see the ones that gave an occupation. The filtering list is really a very powerful thing. If you do decide that you want to turn that off, again, highlight the top row come to the data tab and here's the button for filter. You can turn it off and turn it on. If you decide to merge cells together that will affect the way that the filtering behaves and let's look at an example of that. 
Here I have a James Smith, and he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tracts of land. Now, if I had decided, oh, I'm just going to put all of those names together into one column, that would be fine as far as how it looks on my um, sheet. However, if I do my filtering now and just ask to see James Smith, and then I come and look through here again, I can see this was the William Gaines 1, but I don't see the lines with William Gaines 2 through 10. I have missed out on all of that, all because I merged those cells together. So let's come back and see everything again. I've got all my names here. And then if I control Z, that will unmerge those cells. Now I want to show you the same thing happens if I um, decide to merge from side to side. I'm going to take this Mercer County and I'm going to make it say ge genealogy. And I'm going to merge all these together. Now sometimes I do merge a group of cells together so that uh, I can write a note to myself. I can say uh, there was no John Smith found in Russell County in this year or something like that. But I try not to do it in columns that I think I might be filtering on, and here's the reason why. I've merged all of these cells together. If I look here in county, you can see that genealogy is included there. Show me all the rows that have genealogy in them, and it shows up just fine. But if I try that in any other row, it's not going to appear. If I look for a water course called genealogy, it doesn't show up in our list here. So again, something to keep in mind if you're merging cells together. So let's take this cell that I've renamed genealogy and make it a link. Let's say that I have found a tax record on Family Search and I want to link directly to that. If I click on the cell and then come to the Insert tab, and click on Hyperlink, I can add the web address of where I found that document. If I have downloaded a document or scanned a document at the library, I wouldn't put an address in there. Instead, I would click on this folder and I would find the document on my computer just like if I was searching to open it. Both of these um, methods will work for linking to the document. Tell it OK. Notice that it has changed the format of that text to what it typically puts for any link. It has changed it to blue, it's underlined, and it's bigger than I would like. Click on any cell that has text, click on the Home tab, hit the Format Painter, and click on that cell and it changes it back. Anytime you have linked, if you hover your cursor over it, it changes to a hand and it shows you the web address. The ones that are not linked don't do anything as far as a pop-up is concerned. So this can save you some time if you're wanting to confirm a, a tax record that you've entered in your database or perhaps you couldn't read something originally but now that you've gotten more experience with tax records you might want to take another shot at it. This link allows you to go directly to that document in one click so you can check what you've done. So that wraps up our session for the tax database. I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you get a lot of use out of the um, out of the document. You can find this blank form on my blog site under the downloads tab. Thank you for being with me for this video and I hope it's been helpful to you.